Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday morning uh, experience, and we just want you to worship with us. I know that you're watching by uh, Facebook, by streaming, uh, so we just want you to enter in and enjoy uh, the presence of the Lord as it comes through the airwaves. Uh, you might want to just turn everything off right now and uh, come bring your friend, family in together and uh, worship with us as we worship together, and just let your house or wherever you're watching from become a place uh, where God inhabits, where He comes and just uh, settles in, where His peace and His presence come can minister to you. Worship with us as our worship team leads us in the presence of the Lord.
Thank you so much for joining us this morning. What a powerful worship service we just had. What we wanted to do is we wanted to give an opportunity right now for you to give and to sow seeds into this ministry. The first way you can do that is traditionally by dropping off your tithe and offering to the office. Or you can text NEXT to 73256 and follow the link that's sent back to you. The final way is you can give online through our website, fulllifehurley.com. Now, if you would, get on your feet, get off your couch, and welcome Pastor Jimbo to the stage. Well, good morning. 
Uh, we come into you uh, face, through streaming on Facebook. We want to welcome you guys uh, that, that are watching uh, on your tablets or on your computers. I uh, just want to say welcome. It's a little bit different setup today. Uh, we're coming to you from Full Life Sanctuary, where we'll have just a handful of people here, uh, the worship team, some of the worship team that is with us. Uh, but it is an empty sanctuary this morning. And so uh, the challenge is to be able to uh, preach like there is a house full. So uh, I want to welcome you today, and uh, if you can, uh, sit down with your family, and uh, we're going to get into the Word of God, and, and uh, that's where we're going to find our comfort, our strength, our hope is uh, in His Word. I know church is going to look different for the next few weeks. Uh, we are uh, going to be doing uh, live streaming uh, probably for the next three or four weeks. All of that's uh, flexible. Uh, we've got to um, uh, see what, uh, how things transpire, how things change. And so we thank you for your patience. Thank you for watching. And uh, uh, just, uh, I believe this is a great opportunity for the church to shine, to be the church. Uh, it has not caught God by surprise. I know it's caught a lot of us by surprise, but it has not caught God by surprise. So uh, let you know kind of a little bit of what we're doing over the next few weeks. We will be having worship uh, uh, church online. Uh, as, I hope you enjoyed the worship set this morning, uh, Megan and the uh, worship team has done a great job leading us in the presence of God. Uh, just an atmosphere of praise and worship in the house here this morning. And, uh, and I'll continue to, we'll uh, continue to video uh, the Word of God. And so we'll do this until uh, otherwise instructed. Uh, we, will, we will be uh, also uh, 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 recording our children's church. Sister Renaud and her team will be recording some memory verses and children's activities, games, things that you can do within your home so all the whole entire family is able, being able to be ministered to uh, on every level. They'll try to post that in the evenings so we will not be live streaming in the afternoons on Sunday. Uh, Sister Renaud and children's church will be recording things so you can sit down with your children and, and have an active part of that. Also so I will video uh, weeks three and four for those of you that have entered in uh, to the uh, Inside Full Life class. We've already completed classes one and two, and uh, we will make sure that you get those in your hands so that you can finish your class. I know some of you have been anticipating uh, finishing so that you can become a member, so you can be actively involved in ministry and uh, start working. So we'll make sure that that gets in your hands. Um, so we, you know, I also will post a message, uh, a, a word, a Bible study for Wednesday nights. So we'll do that on Wednesday afternoon during church time. We'll post that, uh, probably uh, pre-record that. It will not be live. We'll just make sure that you have some content for those of you that love to uh, get in the Word and are usually here with us on Wednesday afternoon. Also, all of your department head leaders, uh, you know, keep in touch with them. They, they're going to try to keep in touch with you. Uh, so that uh, things have changed. Events may have changed. Times and schedules may change. So you want to be posted. You want to be updated on uh, current things that are going on. And your department head leaders will do that. The man thing, the joy Bible study, uh, the young adult collective uh, uh, you know, uh, ministry, uh, youth services, fine arts, all of those things uh, may be subject to change. So keep your ear tuned uh, in so that you'll be apprised of what's going on and so that you won't miss out out on anything. Church is different. Church is going to look different, but ministry is going to continue. We're going to continue to minister, and uh, I believe that this is uh, not a, uh, a bad thing. Uh, what the enemy has meant for evil, God will turn that around for his glory. And so uh, I believe that uh, it's going to work to God's benefit. Uh, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Somebody say amen. I couldn't hear you because you're in your home, but I'll trust that you're with me and that you're saying amen here or there. So, uh, so we, 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 you're going to have... Um, you know, it's a challenge to keep you informed with every single detail of what's going on because things are changing so rapidly. But we, we believe that we're flexible enough to be able to do that. So, 
I want you to get your Bibles out. I want you to turn with me to the book of Numbers, the 31st chapter, Numbers chapter 31. And then we've got several, I've got several references that I'm going to give you that I may not have time to go over all of them, but I will uh, give you some references so you can do some home Bible study and you can look at some things I will reference to uh, today. On February the 9th, In the 10 o'clock service, um, something noticeably changed. Something shifted that morning. Uh, God manifested his presence in our church. He came in an awesome way. Um, I can't explain how uh, uh, it changed. I just know that I felt a change. This was prior to... Uh, any uh, coronavirus uh, pandemic, before anything was even mentioned about that, we noticed that Sunday morning as God used Brother Jenry in, a, in an awesome way, and the power of God rushed into this house, and I wasn't the only one that noticed it. Many of you that were here noticed that, but also uh, we had guests that were here, visitors that were uh, attending that morning uh, that testified that, that something spiritual, something supernatural had taken place in our service that morning. And so we know that God is up to something. Uh, uh, I believe he shifted us into a new season, a, a, a different atmosphere. Something new is about to transpire. It lingered over into the evening service um, where uh, uh, the Lord led me to preach on spiritual battles. I had been asked the question several times from several people, uh, 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 you know, because they were encountering, uh, encountering things that were abnormal, spiritual battles that they were facing. And so uh, the Lord led me to preach on, um, on spiritual warfare. Uh, this has led to a five or six week uh, series of messages dealing with battles. And so that's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with some battles. We're dealing with things, a uh, conflict, a struggle, a uh, controversy uh, that we didn't ask for. We didn't even see coming. Uh, but the Lord has begun to prepare us uh, for the things that we're facing our whole lives. Everybody has been touched in some way by this coronavirus. Uh, it's affected uh, a lot of people in a lot of different ways, but all of us have been touched by it in some way. And there's a battle. There's a struggle. And uh, we're going to uh, face these struggles, and we're going to overcome these struggles. Back in December uh, 2019, the Lord uh, dropped a word in my spirit, fortify. I shared this with our leaders, uh, 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 you know, about what I felt like the Lord was saying to us for the upcoming year of, of 2020, that we should fortify, that we should strengthen the areas in which we were weak. Uh, and through much prayer and assessment, I began to just evaluate our church and see what areas that we were most vulnerable in and uh, to, to, to start trying to make sure that we give the enemy no access to uh, us or to our families. Uh, I, 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 after researching that, I looked at it. Uh, I saw, thought where we were most vulnerable, where I seen the enemy having the most success was in the family unit. Uh, uh, and he was coming in, and I believe that uh, we had opened some doors, some areas where the family needed to be uh, strengthened. And so this began a family series where we began to actively uh, try to strengthen the whole entire family unit. I began to preach messages on that. We even uh, started uh, teaching classes, uh, you know, loving our kids on purpose, uh, you know, even from the marriage all the way down to parenting, to uh, the children obeying their parents in the Lord, we started making it fresh. We started, uh, you know, making some things uh, a lot better. And so that was our fresh series that we did. And so uh, the agenda was clear. Our agenda was simply to strengthen the whole entire family unit based off the word that God gave me 
to fortify. That alarmed me a little bit for God to tell me to fortify because I know that uh, he was warning and he was letting us know ahead of time that the battle is going to intensify, that the uh, enemy is going to come and he's going to test us in some ways. And so we, 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 we feel like that God uh, has, has uh, uh, been effectively uh, uh, putting his word into us so that we can make things run more smoothly, more effectively when we are faced with these things. Uh, and so uh, I believe God's prepared us for this. I believe that this has not caught him by surprise. We may be surprised, but prior to all these things happening, I believe God was getting us ready. That's why I feel like we're going to win and we're going to conquer. We're going to overcome this thing because we have already been prepared for the battle. Now, Numbers chapter 31, we've talked about this uh, uh, at some length. But in, 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 in chapter 31, of verse number 1, God is speaking to the children. Children of Israel, he tells Moses, he says, Moses, um, avenge the children of Israel of the Midianites. Afterwards, thou shalt gather unto thy people. And Moses said unto the people, saying, Arm yourself, arm yourselves unto war, and let us go against the Midianites and avenge the Lord of Midian. I know this may sound a little contrary to the loving, kind, gracious, merciful God uh, uh, that we know. But here we see that God is telling Moses and the children of Israel to prepare for war. Prepare yourselves for battle. And I want you to go and avenge. I want you to fight. I want you to annihilate the Midianites. And so uh, uh, if you want to go back and look at some of the other references that I preached on uh, these five kings that were overcome during this time, you can. But I want, to, I want to draw our attention to the Midianites. The Midianites actually had uh, joined up with the Moabites. And we know a lot more about the Moabites than we do the Midianites. Uh, but, but they had kind of linked themselves together. If you'll go back in chapter 25 of Numbers, and you can look in verse number 1, that the Bible says that God had something against uh, the Midianites because they had joined themselves up and did whoredoms uh, against the, the against God. They had allowed uh, they had allowed the uh, idolatry to infiltrate their camp, and because they had uh, uh, because they had allowed these things, the Bible says that God had something against them. He was angry because they had linked up with them. Now the word Midianite. If you look at the word Midianite, it has a meaning. Uh, if you look at biblical terms and meanings, look here, they, they, they're very significant to our understanding of spiritual warfare. We may, are not fighting a physical battle as much as we're facing a spiritual spiritual entity. And the Bible was clear that we are fighting in a battle. Nobody's exempt from this. Nobody's, uh, you know, uh, immune to it. We have to understand that we are in a battle whether we like it or not. There's going to be a struggle of some sort at some time in your life. But the word Midianite actually means uh, conflict. It means strife. Matter of fact, if you look at it in its bare roots, and I mean the very uh, root of it, it means to be a strife producer, a strife producer. And so, uh, so I believe that the enemy that we're faced with today is much more than the coronavirus or what we're seeing in the world today. I believe that we're fighting a much deeper battle. It's a spiritual battle. Now, we can't ignore the fact that there are complications and this is a serious situation that we are faced with. And I believe we need to be cautious on those terms. But I also know enough about spiritual warfare to know that when the enemy says, I'm over here, and he's got our attention over here, then generally he's trying to come in through a different avenue. He's trying to come in through a different uh, uh, means. And so when the enemy's saying, hey, look at me, give me your attention, 
That's when the church, that's when we as spiritual people need to look over our shoulder and find out where the enemy is really coming in. We've been talking about knowing our God. I believe we need to know our God, but also we need to know the enemies that we face as well because you need to be strategic in knowing how to battle against your enemy. First Peter chapter 5 and verse number 8 says that we have an adversary, which is the devil. He says, your adversary. That means you've got a personal enemy. You've got a personal battle that you've got to face and that you've got to fight with, that you've got to contend against. And let me tell you, the way that we're going to be successful is you've got to know what you're fighting against and what strategies that he's used to try to come against you with. You'll be more successful when you understand who you're fighting and uh, what you're fighting and knowing how to uh, direct your fight in the right direction. The Midianites... Look, the Midianites had joined themselves with the Moabites. These were, these were strife-producing people. This is an enemy that, that, uh, uh, that, that, that was, uh, uh, I, I think, created to create disruption in their life. You know what I'm talking about. There are certain people in your life sometimes that uh, are sent just to create drama, just to create havoc just to stir something up strife producers those people that are are sent to aggravate you and frustrate you and get you angry and agitated over the least little things i believe i believe the enemy it's coming in through this way. And you've got to catch this. You've got to listen to me right now. But I believe the Lord dropped in my spirit the real, the real enemy. The real battle is not Corona. But I believe the real battle that we need to face is the Midianites. The strife. The contention. I prayed about it and I said, Lord, what are you saying? God, what, where's the real battle out right now? And I believe the Lord dropped in my spirit that one word was contention. Our battle, ladies and gentlemen, full life, listen to me, church world, is, is not corona, but our real battle and our real fight is contention. I believe that's the Midianites. That's what the uh, enemy is throwing after us. We must overcome contention and strife. We have to kill it at its very roots. He said a vengeance. Uh, uh, avenge this thing. In, in, in Deuteronomy chapter 7, when God was saying to the children of Israel, when I bring you into the land that I've promised you, and I bring you to the place of my will and the place that of provision, a place that I uh, have prepared, he said, you're going to face seven nations even greater than yourself. The, the, these nations are, 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 are they more wealthy? They're more in number? They're just, they're, they're, they're more in, in warfare than you are. Uh, he said, I'm going to bring you this land. I'm not going to remove them out of the land, but I'm going to cause you to live in the land with them. And he said, at a certain time, at a certain point, at a certain season, I will deliver these enemies, your enemies, into your hands. And when I deliver them into your hands, your responsibility is to dispossess these enemies. God will do his part, but he also expects you and I to do our part. And he says, when you do, he said, show them no mercy. He said, I want you to utterly destroy and annihilate them. And so I want to say to you that when we, uh, we understand that, that when God gives us an enemy, say strife and contention and debate, this, 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 this spirit of the Midianites, when he gives them into our hands and he delivers them to us and says, go after them to destroy him. Look, show it no mercy mercy. Do not give it a, 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 an ounce of room to work because you know the story. If you give the devil an inch, you said it, he'll take a mile. If you give him just a little bit, he'll try to maximize that. And so, uh, so I believe that we have to uh, destroy uh, the contentious uh, spirit that is here. Let me show you how I've already seen it at work and you as well. And see, the enemy, if he can divide you, 
If the enemy can, if the enemy can separate you from the body, then he has a better chance of defeating you. The Bible says that the, the, the enemy, Satan, he goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And so we know that that's the way lions do. They creep up on their prey, and then at the, at the uh, uh, appointed time, when he feels like he's got the prey right where he wants them, he will let out a roar. And as he lets out that roar, the wheat will scatter from the fold. And that's where the lion is most successful, when he can separate that one from the fold. Stay in the fold. Stay together. And so what he, what I feel like the enemy is doing is trying to separate us as a body. If he can separate us as a body, then he's more effective in destroying us one by one. There's strength and power. There's strength and unity. Maintain the unity. Okay, so let me show you how it's kind of working as I see it. Uh, you know, when there was an option, we don't have an option right now. It's it's mandated uh, that all churches close their doors. Uh, you know, and and so uh, so before that happened, I saw the war go on. I saw it how it began to take place. As the Lord dropped that much spirit, it's going to be contention. This church over here says we're closing our doors, and uh, for the safety. Uh, of the public. We're going to follow the CDC guidelines and we're going to do that. And, and, and some felt like it was premature. And so the church over here that felt like this was an opportunity uh, for us to shine and be the church and not let the state or the federal government dictate to us what we do, began to slur and shoot arrows at the church over here that says, you're faithless. You're giving in to the, you're giving in to the system, and you're, you're, not, you're, you're not standing strong. You're running as cowards, and you've got fear. And, and then the church on this side looks at the church over here on this side and says, you know what? Y'all are stupid. You're ignorant. You're defying the laws of the land. And so what we had is a battle not between good and evil, but between the church. Between the kingdom of God. Ladies and gentlemen, that's our battle that we must contend for unity. That, look, you do what you feel like God's called you to do. I will do what God called me to do. And let me tell you what, I believe they will coincide and we can agree to disagree. And so it filters down to even church boards or even congregation, people in congregations that are fighting with one another saying, look here, I think we should do this and I think we should do that. I think we, l listen, listen, the battle is not that. Do you see how strategic the enemy is being and trying to divide and to separate us as the people of God? Because he knows that two are, uh, are better than one and a threefold cord's not quickly broken. He knows that if one can send a thousand, two can in 10,000, he does not want us to be unified. So the battle, the battle is for us to maintain our unity, to maintain that, that uh, cohesiveness of the spirit that, look, I might not always agree with you, and you may not always agree with me, and we will have differences, but we are in covenant relationship just like a marriage. Your spouse and yourself may not always agree with one another, but we may remain married and we will work through that difficulty. Be careful not to let the enemy defeat you with contention. Amen? So, or with strife. Romans chapter 12 and verse 18 says, he says, if it's possible, live peaceably with all men. Oh, if it's possible. Maintain that a unity. So how, how do I, there's, what's some practical things, Brother Jimbo, that I can do? Give me some practical things of how I can fight this battle with the Midianites or with the spirit of contention. Show me some practical things. I'm going to give you a few little things real quick to how to do that. Number one, number one is to avoid conflict. Go with me in your scriptures to Timothy, 2 Timothy. I want to show you something. We're going to read verses 19 through 26, and I want to show you. We know sometimes you got to avoid conflict head on. Sometimes you just go ahead and you just, you know, you know the, the conflict chose you. You didn't choose it. 
choosing your battles, uh, I believe, is important. But sometimes the battle chooses you. What do you do when the battle chooses you? And you, you have to stand and fight. I think you stand and fight. But, but there are some ways, I think, that we can maintain our peace with other people and we can, we can overcome this battle called contention. I want you to look at verse number 19. He says, nevertheless, am I there? let's see, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. The last part of that, he says, let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also wood, hay, or, or wood and earth, and some to honor, and some are to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself, this is not something God does for you. This is a responsibility that he gives to each Christian uh, that is trying to walk in the faith. If any man therefore purge himself from these things, he shall be a vessel of honor, sanctified, meet for the master's use, prepared unto every good work. That's what we want to be, right? And he says, look, he gives some instructions in verse 22. Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that are called uh, on the name of the Lord out of a pure heart. Look what he says. Here, here's your key number one. It says, but foolish and unlearned questioning Questions avoid knowing that they gender strife and that the servant of the Lord must not strive but to be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. Uh, if God preventure, we will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth and that, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Look, I believe the first step that we have here to maintain peace is to avoid foolish and unlearned questions. I look up that word foolish, and that word foolish in the Greek, here's what it means, stupid. <laughs> it's what it means, stupid, dull, absurd, even means blockhead. <laughs> right, right. Don't look at your neighbor and say, don't be a blockhead. I know you got pizza or you might be eating right now or you got a, a coffee in your hands, but whatever. Foolish. It says, he says, avoid stupid and unlearned things that you don't know about. People who are going to ask you questions, they know you don't have an answer because there is no answer to it. You just, he said, avoid those things. Don't, don't get in a debate about those things. Don't get in an argument and voice your opinion about things that don't really matter at all because we're not always going to agree. We're not going to agree on politics and we're not always going to agree on, on, on the way things should be done. And oh my goodness, uh, we've got to avoid those things. How, 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 how do we practice some of these things? Listen, I don't know about you, uh, but, but I have to die to my flesh. Oh, I, I have some opinions. I, I've got some, some things that I think should be done a certain way don't you all? They say opinions are like armpits. Everybody's got a couple, and they all stink. And so, so I, I, you know, I've said this uh, uh, several times in this, in this series, that, that, that uh, six plus three equals nine. But so does five plus four. So does seven plus two. There, there's different ways, perspectives that we look at things, but it all comes to the same number. There, there will be a, there, we all want the same thing, but getting there, sometimes there's a conflict in how we approach it and how we get there. And so the, the battle is, is to make sure that I'm not operating out of my flesh. Are you with me? I'm not. I'm not carnal in what I am opinionated about. That what I am opinionated about comes from, look, I know you can back up anything you want to be opinionated about through the Word. You can bring it out of context. But let me tell you what, nothing will overcome the spirit of contention like walking in the Spirit. Romans chapter 8 says, if you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of of the flesh. There is no good thing in my flesh. There's no good thing when I act carnal. 
when I do things out of my own uh, uh, mind. Matter of fact, Romans chapter 8 says to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. That's what we're after. We're trying to get the contention out. We're trying to kill that thing. But the only way we're going to do that is to get our flesh under subjection. Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, he says, he says that, uh, 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 I'm sorry, uh, chapter 14 of Romans, he says that, that I beat my body under subjection. I make sure that my body and my will is not in control, but the Lord is in control. He says in Romans chapter 14, verse 19, follow after the things that make for peace and edify one another. James chapter 3 and verse 14 says, if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, he said, lie not against the truth. He said, this wisdom descends not from above. This don't come from God. But this kind of attitude and spirit he said, is earthly, is sensual, is devilish, which means demonic. If there's contention, strife, and debate, he goes on to say where, where this is. He said, there's confusion and every evil work. It's the devil's playground when there's strife and contention and a lack of unity and peace. That's our battle. I battle it. I, I know that you battle it. Our flesh, as long as you're living on this earth, you're going to battle the flesh. Paul said it like this. He said, there's a war going on between my flesh and my spirit man. Uh, the things I don't want to do, I do. And the things I, you know, I want to do, I can't do because there's a battle that's going on on the inside of me. I must win that battle with my flesh. If I'm going to be victorious over that Midianite spirit, then I must conquer my flesh. Somebody say amen. So, uh, Jesus Jesus basically said in Matthew chapter 16 and 24, he said, you've got to deny yourself. He said, if, if any man comes after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. You've got to tell yourself no. You've got to make sure that you don't let things come out of your mouth that's fleshly. That you don't give in to things that are carnal and that we walk this walk that God has given us to walk with fear in our hearts, with love, with gentleness, with patience, with kindness, and so that we are representing who he is. Matter of fact, peace is one of the fruits of the Spirit. How do you know that you're walking in God? Because there'll be fruits that come out of that, and one of those fruits is the fruit of peace. How do I know if I'm walking in the flesh? You'll see in Galatians chapter 5, he says that they do these things. He said the, the flesh is going to manifest. And so, so you can see what's going on in your life by the actions that we have. I must bring my flesh under subjection. I must make sure that I'm doing God's, uh, doing it God's way instead of my way. You think about it. If we were to give our flesh everything that it wanted, how messed up would we be? If you give your children everything they want, what are they called? Spoiled brats. So, so if God were to give us everything we wanted, everything our flesh wanted, we would be messed up and we would be spiritually spoiled. Listen, we need to tell our flesh no. That's why fasting is important. That's why prayer is important. It's telling our flesh, you're not in control, but I'm denying myself these things so that I can walk in the Spirit, so that I can be a stronger Christian, so I can overcome the battle that, is about, uh, that I'm about to be faced with. Look, let me tell you what. God will pre uh, warn you. He will get you ready for whatever battle you're doing. We just got to pay attention that, that or, or, you know, make sure that we are responding to his, his urging to do what he's called us to do. He may urge you to fast and you don't know why. I guarantee you, if he's, if he's calling you to fast, if he's calling you to, uh, to, to uh, uh, deny yourself of some pleasure that maybe you want and choose a different route, I promise you, you're about to face a battle 
uh, uh, and you're about to go through some kind of contest or some kind of controversy so that uh, God is trying to strengthen you so that you'll be a winner so that you can conquer those things. Reminded in Matthew chapter 26 where Jesus was, was f- about to face the biggest battle of his life. I mean, he's about to go to the cross. He, he's about to be whipped, uh, a crown of thorns put on his head, uh, his beard's about to be plucked. He's about to be beaten with 39 stripes with a cat of nine tails that's going to pull flesh and meat from his bones. He's going to have to carry a cross all the way up Golgotha's hill and suffer and bleed. And die. He's going to be hung before his family. He's going, to be, he's going to be humiliated publicly in front of everybody. And he, he's feeling this battle. He don't know quite what he's going to face. He's, he's not really sure exactly. He just knows that he must do the will of the Father. He just knows that somehow or another, you know, I I, I must do what God wants me to do and not what I want to do. The Bible says that prior to this happening, he left his disciples and he said, pray. I want you to go and pray. I'm going out here to the garden and I'm going uh, out to the Gethsemane here and I'm going to pray. The Bible says that Jesus prayed so intently that his Sweat became as great drops of blood. Now, this was not just a lay me down to sleep kind of prayer where he said, God bless the disciple, bless everybody, whatever. No, no, this was a prayer of intensity. I believe we can learn a lesson from here. I believe this is what we can do. We can learn this right here. That we learn that when you pray, and you pray, I believe sometimes your prayer has to change. I believe there's times where you can pray just normal prayers, blessings over your food or over your family. That's fine. But when you're about to face a battle bigger than you, I believe that's where we got to get intense. And this is what Jesus did. Jesus got intense with his prayer. I mean, he prayed earnestly. And you can hear it in his voice as he's saying, God, if there's any other way, If there's any other way you can do this, that I don't have to be crucified and that I have to die and be humiliated. And if there's another way you can do this, he said, let this cup pass from me. See, Jesus was battling with his flesh. His flesh did not want to die. His flesh did not want to suffer. Just like you and I, he battles the same thing. Our flesh does not want to give in. Our flesh does not want to, you know, you know, suffer. It doesn't want to have to comply. And so Jesus showed this that model. He he intensely said, "God, nevertheless, not my will, but let Your will be done." I don't want to die. Did you ever thought about that? Jesus did not want to die for you. Sometimes we think, oh, he gladly went to the cross. And oh, he gladly suffered. He gladly took, uh, his spirit man may have, but his flesh did not want to do it. We hear that in this passage. Look, there's going to be things that your flesh just simply does not want to do. But we're going to have to say with Jesus, nevertheless, not my will, but let your will be done in my life. Because we know that our will leads us into spiritual death. Our will leads us in carnality. Our will leads us to places and and, and causes us to do things that are not good for our walk with God. So, so we must do it God's way. I believe that's the battle. Jesus in the in the garden, I believe he he battled with that. Look, the only way I can get my flesh under subjection, and I know that Jesus modeled that as well to get his flesh under subjection is to pray. I believe prayer is the key. I believe the victory is won in your prayer room. The victory is won when you have a constant prayer life. Don't wait till you get into the battle to start praying. I believe the battle is won way before you ever face the enemy in the prayer room. When you when you're in prayer, you win everywhere. I believe that's where, that's where the victory's won. It's behind the scenes. 
It's when you're, when you're interceding and when you're praying and you got your flesh under subjection, when you do face the enemy, you will be already a victor. You will already have overcome those things and the battle won't be less intense. You ever thought about this? I thought about this the other day. The, the, that the blood that Jesus said on the cross, we know it was for the salvation of many. It was it's to save us. By his blood, I love those old songs. You know, it's his blood uh, that, that saves us. You know, you know, only by the blood are we saved. And, and I believe that. But I want, I want to show you something here that I thought was very interesting. That was not the first place Jesus shed his blood was at crucifixion. He shed his blood first in the prayer room. He, he shed his blood first in intercessory prayer. How was, he over, how was he able to overcome death, hell, and the grave? It's because he won it in the prayer room. He won it in intercessory prayer. How are you and I going to win and conquer our enemy of contention and other things that are faced with it? We're going to win it when we pray, when we get in the prayer room. So just a few tips I could preach on, but I know my time is up. And so I want us to understand that we're, we're, facing, we're facing some uncharted territory, folks. We're, 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 look, and when people don't understand where they're going, there's a more, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, we, we give in to our flesh more because, because we're scared, because we're fearful, because we, we don't know what to do. We can't schedule it out. We can't plan it. We, we've, you know, we don't have a formula for it. And so, therefore, everybody's on edge. And usually, you, you're, you're going to attack one another. You're going you're gonna, to you know, say things you shouldn't say out of defense mechanisms. You've heard the, you've heard the statement, hurt people hurt people. Well, that's true. When you're hurt and when you're wounded and you don't know what to do, let me tell you what. You will respond with the emotions that you have. But listen, I'm here to tell you today. I'm encouraging you today. Fight the battle of contention. You're my brother. You're my sister. And I love you. And you got to love me. That's the way of God. The real enemy is not controvers- uh, uh, coronavirus. You know, it is... A spirit, I think, that's coming in and trying to divide us. We may not see eye to eye on everything, but we must go hand in hand. L- listen, I know that, 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 that some of your peace has been disturbed, and, and you're living, <laughs> you're living in, in the house right now where, you know, it may be chaotic. It, you may, it, it's just uncharted territory right now. I saw a funny video this morning. Uh, where a guy was being interviewed, and uh, the interview, it was a little comical thing. The interview was, he said, okay, if you have to be quarantined with your wife and children for four weeks, A or B, he he immediately said, B. (laughs) So what he was saying was, look here, I would rather do anything else than to be quarantined with my family and my wife and my kids for four weeks in the household. Listen, I know that's funny, and I know that a lot of people feel that way, but listen, this is a great opportunity for you to reconnect, hit reset with your family, and you reconnect with your wife and your husband, and you reconnect with your children, and you play some board games together, and you, 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 you reconnect as a family because, let me tell you what, the enemy, the enemy would love to do nothing more than to come and separate us. And he's done that. He's been effective at that. Now, were you working, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, to take care of your family. You know, you're working 60, 70 hours, some of you, a week, and you barely even uh, communicate with your kids. Uh, and, and so this is a way, I think, that we can be brought back together as a family unit. But the battle is re- Unity is not easy. Unity is a, a, a battle that I got to make sure that I maintain the unity in my home, in my family, and with my spro- brothers and sisters in the Lord. So I want us to pray together. I want you to just close your eyes and I want to just stretch my hand toward the TV and stretch my hand toward your home. I want to speak into your home right now. Right now, I pray to God that you would open our eyes, every person that's watching, every person that's listening. I pray you would open our eyes to our adversary, the enemy, the devil, 
who goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Help us to know his strategies and help us to know what he has plotted against us and help us to be offensive and not just defensive in our approach in winning this battle. I pray, dear God, that we would storm the gates of hell and we would crush this spirit, this Midianite spirit, this spirit of strife and contention, that we be unified like we've never have before. I speak right now peace and unity. I declare right now, uh, you know, a, a, a covenant between uh, each other with relationships that line up with God's word in your home and in your life. I speak blessings over you now, peace in your home. God, show us strategic ways and how to be uh, cohesive with one another, God, to be in unity with one another. And we'll pray this in the mighty name of Jesus, and we thank you for it. If you agree with that, say amen. God bless you. Next week, we'll be uh, doing the same thing in the same manner. We'll finish up some of these things uh, on battles and how God is leading us uh, to do that. God bless you. We love you, and we'll see you next time. Keep your ear open Wednesday night for the message.